May I speak with words that belong to the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, here we are at that time in the year. That time in the year which the church has been able to agree and label the period of the kingdom. And when I say the church, um, I don't mean the Church of England or the Methodist Church or the Roman Catholic Church, but all together within the wider framework of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we've been able to make that agreement. For me, it's um, time for John Barton. Um, Not John Barton's special agent, uh, but John Barton, priest and author. Because he calls us in his writings at this time of the year to take up what he calls our royal commission and our royal commission is to be people of the word and people of the book you could also come at it the other way and it would have just as much meaning we're called to be people of the word and in being called to be people of the word we're called to be people of the Lord Jesus Christ for Jesus Christ alone is the true word of God that word of God that we will celebrate on Christmas Day as the word incarnate our Lord Jesus Christ the word incarnate the divine son of God but truly man at the same time people of the word and people of the book we share particularly with our Jewish brothers and sisters in being people of the book in this case the emphasis is on the Old Testament but of course it moves on and we put our focus our main focus on the New Testament as we accept Jesus to be the word incarnate and to be the word that has the central part in our life and being both as individuals and corporately as fellowships and congregations that great um, novena prayer which comes lifted straight from the scriptures without you without Jesus we are nothing but with Jesus we have and are everything and of course it depends where you put your values do you place your values on Jesus and on the living word of God contained in the scriptures or do you put your value in lesser gods like the bank account I remember some while ago listening to um, a newly consecrated bishop who said he wanted to bankrupt the diocese within three or four years and he called on every incumbent in the diocese 
to bankrupt every parish because he, he said, you know, we spend far too t much time focusing on the financial things of this life when actually we are called to focus on the deeper spiritual uh, fellowship and communion that Christ calls us to. And I find it strange on the one account, but consistent on the other, that when Jesus is praising um, his servants who have been entrusted uh, with the things that mattered to him while he was away, the focus is on money. When Jesus says, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter now into the joy of the Father's kingdom, different version to the one we've heard this morning, but no less positive. Jesus himself is actually focusing on money because he knows that if he's going to be able to touch the lives of people, he really ought to be where they are in order that he might bring them to journey to be where he is. What does that mean for us in 2023? It probably means that the lights should be out this morning and that we should have gone to split ourselves up into three groups and uh, gone to the places where people are this morning. We should perhaps have had a stall at the local garden centre, well, one of the local ones anyway, where they've got a winter fair this morning and have, tr and, and have tried in some meaningful way to bring the good news of this season to bear in their lives or to be in a supermarket and perhaps just doing something as simple as pushing the trolley around uh, for other people and uh, bringing a bit of help and a busload of blessing into their lives. It's interesting, um, the supermarket chain Asda and other supermarket chains are available. Um, but Asda has delegated and appointed uh, a chaplain for every one of their supermarkets. And at their supermarket, I, th I think I'm right in saying, at Beeston in Nottingham this morning, there's not just one, but there are two weddings taking place in the supermarket. Now, on the one hand, I would have married Vera anywhere because I know that God would have been there and it would have been blessed by him. But on the other hand, among the tins of beans and the Brussels sprouts, no, I think I draw a line at that. But in both these instances today, these two couples, one that they'd been living together about 17 years, and the other one is a younger couple who are fresh at the task. Um, they're getting married in the supermarket because in both couples, one out of each couple works at the supermarket. But both of them have come to know the love of God through the work of the chaplain, through the work of the, the priest in that place. So when the diocesan synod considers, it, considers its uh, budget and says, well, the one thing that we can cut is chaplaincy in schools and supermarkets and hospitals and all these different places. 
and we are told that the reason they're cutting them is they don't see any return. I think they're wrong. I think they're wrong. Because with the right person in the right place, then the good news can be proclaimed in a very special way, just as in the way we proclaim the good news in our worship and daily living. So we, you know, we mustn't write these mission opportunities off. And we never know um, when the opportunity will come and we will actually be able to reach out in the name of God in ways that we've never imagined. How wonderful are the feet of those who bring good news. And each one of us is called to bring good news to bear in the places where we live and work and worship. And I want to just say one thing about where we worship. Don't presume that the person who's sitting at the side of you and has been doing for many years is a Christian. Because just in the same way that Jesus being born in a stable didn't make him a racehorse, there are many who sit in our pews week by week who go through the motions but haven't met the risen Christ. So we're there to challenge each other because we must not risk that one be lost to the kingdom of God. We are all called, but do we all respond? And when I say do we all respond, I'm not thinking about the rotor um, to clean the toilets or make the tea. There are plenty of people attending to that side of things, even um, if we struggle. But I'm talking about presenting people with a clear charge to live out the fact that we are people of the word. We are people of the book. And we become of greatest use to God when we confess that and share it with others. And so, until God's kingdom come, we, wait, we work as faithful servants of the eternal covenant. To God be the praise, the thanksgiving, and the glory, now and to eternity, world without end. Amen.